Welcome to another episode of WTF Cinema. Once they're in the sex cave, the almost boyfriend tries to rape her. Now, I tried a couple of times to explain how it was really stupid to come to the sex cave with the boy and then have no expectation of having sex with him. But there's no way I could phrase that without making it sound like she was asking for it. And I'm going to be honest with you. Rape is about the only topic I don't find any humor in. I don't crack jokes about. I just leave it alone. So, with that in mind, let's move on from this before I try to make it funny and lose all respect for myself. And then the vagina attacks, severing the penis completely, which the movie makes sure to show us. I'll spare you the visual. Uh, while screaming and upset, the boy dives into the water and the girl just kind of freaks out for a while. Now we see her trying to go about her normal life, but the fact that her vagina is literally a man-eater is throwing her off her game, as it does for so many unfortunate poor women. Then, Sleazy Guy shows up and tries to pick up Dawn at an abstinence rally. Because when I am looking for a chick to take home and bang, abstinence at rally is my first pit stop. Oh yeah. That would actually explain quite a bit about my lack of success in the department. I need to rethink this. <laughs> because so many teenage boys have business cards. Here, honey, give me a call. Now, intercut with some of this stuff, we get Dawn occasionally searching for her rapist to try and figure out what happened to him. We see he never made it back to the car, so he couldn't swim that far. And the next time we see him, he's dead and his body is dragged out of the water. So, what we're supposed to take from this is that it, it bit his penis off, which caused him to drown. The loss of your penis does not result in instantaneous death. You can die from it, sure, from eventual blood loss. Eventual. John Wayne Bobbitt survived. He got to make a movie called Franken Penis. Not only did he survive it getting cut off, they reattached it, and it worked. So, there's no reason for the boy to have died instantaneously from a severed penis. It just go. Just go. Finally, she gets the idea of going to see a doctor about her... Exactly. The doctor, during the course of the examination, decides to really get in there and see how things are working. So he takes his glove off, which seems perfectly healthy and sanitary, and gets right up in there. And her vagina responds the only way it can, by chopping off his fingers, leaving her freaking out, running out of the office, and him laying on the ground screaming, Vagina Dentata! Vagina Dentata! Ah! Vagina Dentata, of course, is the Latin term for what she's got in her vagina. Uh, she looks it up, she learns a lot about the mythos of Vagina Dentata, and so we, the audience, learn it. It's a real hoot nanny. She returns home to have a talk with her mother about her... <laughs> exactly. Only to find her passed out on the floor from unspecified film illness while her stepbrother is banging some chick in the butt in the background. His door's open. He can see the woman's down there. So can the girlfriend. But the mother's just gonna lay there and be taken to the hospital. Unwilling to return home and deal with the antichrist of a stepbrother, and the fact that her stepfather is now in the hospital with her mother, Dawn turns to the only person she can trust. Oh no! Not one of her friends, because those two characters, they, they vanished halfway through the film and we never hear from them or about them ever again. Her purity pals are gone. No, no, she goes to the house of Sleazy Guy, where he lives in the garage. And she's a little out of it, but she does manage to explain that she suffers from vagina dentata. And that according to legend, the only way to overcome it is for a brave warrior to face the teeth and survive. Gee, 
I wonder what happens when you tell a young teenage boy that uh, he needs to have sex with you to save you. Hmm. Of course, when you're going to have sex with a girl with teeth in her vagina, and fellas, write this down, because uh, it's good to have this knowledge handy. You give them Valium, get them drunk, and then light a bunch of candles. Just like Sleazy Guy does here. For somebody who was freaking out for the last, like, 20 minutes of this movie about her vagina just cutting off fingers and penises, she barely puts up any protest to this guy having sex with her. That's not even taking into account the purity pledge, which she never violated because getting raped doesn't count. So at no point during this process did she think, oh man, I've got teeth in my vagina. I should just consider it closed for business. I should just shut that thing off and find a way to have a healthy life without having sex. She wasn't planning on having sex till she was going to get married anyway. And she didn't want to hang out with guys she was attracted to. So I don't think she was going to get married. Could have had a perfectly healthy life. But apparently, she decides to throw away all those beliefs without telling us when and why she does. And just lets the guy have sex with her. Luckily for Sleazy Guy, her... Yes, seems to react well to the drug and alcohol cocktail, and he survives his brave ordeal. Okay, let's talk about breasts in film, shall we? There is no movie ever made that has to have breasts in it, unless it is literally a porn film. Uh, the Amateurs is a great example. It is a movie about Jeff Bridges making a porn film, has no nudity, great movie. There are some really bad films out there whose only redeeming quality, at least to people interested in this subject matter, is that you get to see boobs in it. Uh, if your movie is so horrible that you don't think anybody would watch it, throw in some boobs. Which is what has happened here, clearly. Because we had shower scenes and sex scenes leading up to this, and we never saw any breasts. They were always covered by angles or materials. We never saw anything. We are now more than halfway through the film, and we get this one random scene where she's just staring at herself naked in the mirror for no reason. It is my honest belief that this scene did not exist when the movie was first cut together. The director of this film looked at this turd he had on his hands and went, we'll add in some boobs. Fifteen seconds of boobs is never going to save your film. If you're relying on fifteen seconds of boobs to save your film, your film is lost. 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 And I, the part of the reason I'm so confident that this was filmed afterwards and inserted in when they had already finished production is because the room it happens in doesn't really look like any of the other settings around that time and place. It is a close-up of her looking at herself in the mirror, and then she cuts back to the guy's garage bedroom. I'm okay with boobs in film. I'm okay when there aren't boobs in film. But this is jarring. Because you're, you, by this point, you've already accepted there's no boobs in this film. Let's move on. And then there's just this pair of boobs for no reason. These are jarring boobs. Jarring. They take you right out of the experience. And boobs should never do that. This movie ruined boobs. The next morning, while having sex with Dawn again... The guy reveals to her that the only reason he had sex with her was because he made a bet with his friends who said that he couldn't get away with it. Always such a sweet talker, this guy. While you're having sex with her, explaining that you did it on a dare. Can you guess what happens to him next? Okay, so hold up. She can control the teeth now? All it took for her to learn how to master, control the teeth, is a night of alcohol and Valium, and now she can control them. We didn't want to address her realizing she could control them at any point. We just, boom! Now she has power over them. Now she is a penis-fighting crime fighter. Rawr! See, this is something we could have addressed instead of having her stare at herself in the mirror, learning that she could contract muscles or something. But no, this important shift in character happens off screen and we're never even told about it. We have to assume it from what happens. 
See, that's what a good movie does. It makes you assume when radical things happen. Also, while she was examining her breasts, her mother died. Which causes the father to go and try to kick his son out of the house because his son basically let the stepmom die. So he's understandably upset. By the way, the girlfriend saw it too. She's a bitch as well. But she's never held accountable for it. At all. Now, after having his vicious attack dog attack his father, the son reveals that he was in love with Dawn all along when they were little kids. And he's become this antichrist because of his anger at his dad for making this girl he was in love with his sister. Guys, do you remember the first girl you ever had a crush on, you ever had feelings for? I'm talking way back. I'm talking when you were eight. You remember her? You remember how those feelings never changed? You remember how you grew up, you dated other people, and yet you still loved only her? You remember how, despite the fact that the two of you grew apart in every way humanly possible and had absolutely nothing in common with one another, that love never died? For 12 years you carried that torch and nothing could extinguish it? Me either. So Dawn decides it's finally time to put her... Yes, to the test. She is going to use the teeth for justice. She is going to show that sleazy stepbrother that killing her mom comes at a cost. That you can't get away with being a jerk like that without paying the ultimate price. That's right, she shows up and she's gonna... Force him to have vaginal sex with her. I'll spare you the visual, but basically the dog ends up eating his severed penis. So she's now a vaginal crime fighter, screwing the evil men of the world to make them atone for their sins. And you know what's sad? That is exactly what I expected this movie to be. As if to prove my point, the movie ends with Dawn running away from home, getting picked up by a sleazy guy in a car who makes it very clear he's going to rape her, and she just kind of smiles knowingly at the camera, because rape is funny. This film is not enjoyable, and if I had to pick a single reason why, it's this. The message wavers. The film starts out as an allegory about premarital sex. It then becomes a monster movie where the monster is her vagina, and then it ends up metamorphizing into a vaginal crime fighting story. Now those last two, The Monster and The Crime Fighter, those are bad movies. There is no way to polish those turds. They're B-movies. Now you could make them campy and funny and still have some modicum of success with them, but it is never going to be a good movie. The first one though, The Allegory. If you had a really quality team working on this, you could potentially make a decent movie using the teeth in her vagina as an allegory for the, the dangers of premarital sex. You could actually possibly make something like that. You would have to not address the vagina directly. You would have to, you know, do subtle images, which this movie also tries to do. It tries to show you pictures that allude to her teeth in her vagina. The problem is there was no quality behind the camera on this one, and they couldn't pick a message and stick with it. This movie had like a 5% chance of being decent and didn't even come close. I watched it. You don't have to. There is nothing for you here. I'll see you next week. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for watching WTF Cinema. Until next time, what the f*** man.